Hello, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It's about mm, two minutes to 1 a.m. Eastern Time, now September 30th, 2016. I want to go over the very latest run of the global forecast system model. This is a global model that is regarded as pretty good. Uh, it and the European, the ECMWF, generally do fairly well overall, and so this is one of the more reliable global models that a lot of people talk about. And the latest run, the 0Z run, that means it was initialized with data at 0 UTC. We call it 0Z for short, and that is roughly 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And it has extra data in it tonight from the Gulfstream 4 jet that flew around this environment to drop extra dropsons to collect more upper air data to provide a better initialization of the model. Normally over North America especially, and throughout other parts of the world, weather balloons are launched twice a day, and that gives us the upper air data that initializes the models. Well, there are few and far between places to launch weather balloons, and certainly not up here in the Sargasso Sea area between Bermuda and the United States. So the Gulfstream 4 jet releasing these extra dropsons helps to get more data and hopefully a better resolution in the model. So let's go ahead and press start here. And I want you to watch what happens. This is the 500 millibar level, and we can track Matthew as it comes along here, diving more to the southwest in this run, closer to Columbia, and, uh, and then it moves off to the west, slowing down quite significantly, very slow for a few hours here, and then it finally starts to turn back towards the north and northwest with time edging closer and closer to Jamaica on this run with what looks like to be a direct hit across the eastern third of Jamaica before finally moving into eastern Cuba and then moving out towards the Bahamas from there late into the weekend, early next week. Finally, by day five, it ends just short of Andros Island in the Bahamas. So let's just watch this track here. You see it gets closer to Colombia and not far from the Gulf of Venezuela and not too far away from Aruba, uh, which is down here, by the way, there's Aruba. And this is really interesting. So does the Gulfstream 4 additional data points support this? Is this why this is happening? Uh, you would have to think that it is at least solidifying the consistency of the GFS in its turn to the north over time. Now the trend west gets this back beyond 78 degrees longitude and you only need another couple of degrees longitude folks and this could very well come in towards southeast Florida but that is beyond the time frame of what I'm showing here on the model five days is as far as we really need to look right now because beyond that time the errors become too large to even worry about but you can bet that folks in the Bahamas here southeast Florida later uh, we'll need to be watching this extremely closely. First up, though, Jamaica and eastern Cuba, lessening the threat, fortunately, for Haiti. And that's good news for obvious reasons, but this doesn't look quite as promising for Jamaica, certainly eastern Cuba, and then parts of the Bahamas. So an interesting turn of events with this additional data assimilated into the global forecast system it will also be in the zero Z run of the ECMWF or the Euro and we'll see what that does to the model. You remember this time last year when Joaquin was out there a lot of extra upper air data was collected via different methods uh, including additional weather balloon launches over the United States and it took place I think on a Wednesday night when it looked like Joaquin could come into the mid-Atlantic states and that upper air data extra sample uh, data points resulted in the models, the American generated models shifting more towards the Euro idea which was out to sea with Joaquin. This year it's a little bit different. It's like the European is trending more towards the GFS idea in terms of the overall track while the GFS is trending towards the Euro with the speed. I will say this before I sign off. It's my opinion, it, it certainly has come west enough to hit the United States. Longitudinally speaking, it would be trapped in the southeast United States area if it moved due north 
uh, or even 10 degrees east of due north for several days after the Bahamas. What will be interesting is if the timing is faster, by 12 to 18 hours, it could even be more threatening to the southeast, North Carolina in particular. That is, again, beyond the five-day time frame. We can talk more about that tomorrow because we'll be 12 hours closer to all of that, and we'll see what happens from there. All right? So that is a late-night, early-morning look. Either way, you want to look at it for September 30th here. Friday morning, uh, interesting times ahead. Again, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'll be back again with you in the morning.